Hey everybody, this is the fourth here. And in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the noise gate. So a noise gate is essentially an extreme version of an expander. More specifically, an extreme version of a bottom down expander. And in this video, I will again be using the fruity limiter to show you the basics of how a noise gate works, but I will also be using another tool because the fruity limiter doesn't have certain parameters that are very useful sometimes for your noise gate, depending on what you're trying to do. So what a noise gate is meant to do is reduce the level of your sound by a certain amount whenever it drops below a certain level. And oftentimes, the amount you want to reduce it will be all the way to minus infinity decibels. So you'll have some similar parameters on the noise gate as you do on a compressor and an expander. You know, you will have a threshold parameter. And you can see in the fruity limiter, for the compressor, you would take the threshold from the top down. On the noise gate, you take the threshold from the bottom up. And that's because the noise gate affects all of the sound that is below the threshold, and only the sound that is below the threshold. So if I play this snare, and now let's say I want to remove some of that ringing, I might set the threshold. You can see that it's just above that kind of ringing tail. And so, once the snare drops below this threshold, the noise gate will start to work. And now I can adjust the gain knob to determine how much the noise gate reduces that level. And sometimes this gain knob might have different names. It might be called attenuation or something else entirely. So uh, if you're using you know, a certain noise gate and you're not sure exactly how each parameter works, uh, definitely read the manual, that should help you out. But for this sound, let's say I want to take the gain all the way down. You know, I want to completely silence the sound after it drops below that threshold. So I'll take it to minus infinity. And now you can hear that before, where the snare had kind of a nice ringing tail. The noise gate has completely cut that out. And then you have the release parameter, and this tells the noise gate how quickly to apply this gain reduction to your sound. So you can hear if I turn it up quite a bit, the sound sounds pretty much normal. But if I start to take it down, You know, it starts to cut out a lot quicker. So if you don't really like the abrupt sound that it has when it's set like this, you can kind of increase that to make it a little bit more smooth. And you're still getting that noise gate kind of effect. So those are pretty much the basics of how a noise gate works, but there are other parameters that different noise gates will have that can be very useful to know about, um, especially the hold parameter. So I'm going to be using a different plugin to show you the attack and the hold parameters. So you can hear it with this noise gate on, you know, it um, affects the sound in a very similar way. It just kind of uh, makes it cut out when it drops below the threshold. And so you can hear that it happens really quite quickly. But what the hold parameter does is it will tell that noise gate to wait before it starts to cut out the sound. So whenever the sound drops below the threshold, 
the noise gate will wait an amount of time determined by this hold time before it starts to take that level down to zero. And then how quickly it takes that sound to zero after the hold time. Because during the hold time, there'll be no reduction in the level at all. It will just let the normal sound pass through. But once the hold time is up, it will start to be reduced to zero. Um, and the time of that reduction is based on the release. So you can hear with the hold set to zero. It happens very quickly, but if I start to turn that up, you know, it lets the sound through for a while before it starts to take the level down. And in an earlier video in a previous section of this tutorial, I looked at gated reverb and it was a technique using a noise gate. And if you watch that video, you notice that I had some trouble getting the reverb to cut out smoothly. And that's because the reverb would kind of fluctuate between going above and below the threshold. And what the hold does is it lets you set the threshold and then it holds it for a while so that you don't get that weird, you know, cutting out noise. And you can, you can hear that kind of noise if I set the release to be a very short release. It, it sounds a little bit staticky, but if I turn the hold up, you know, it, it doesn't have that staticky sound. Um, now, I, I do have to set it to a setting so that it doesn't, you know, fluctuate above and below the threshold. But for gated reverb, uh, you know, setting the hold and the threshold and the release all to certain values can really help you get that smooth gated reverb sound and have it be exactly how you want. Hey guys, um, I apologize for this weird edit here in the video, but Earlier in this video, I mentioned that the Fruity Limiter doesn't really have a hold option uh, for the noise gate, but I just discovered that the ahead knob actually uh, provides the same kind of function. So you can hear right now, the noise gate cuts out the reverb of the sound to be this quickly. And if I turn that ahead knob up, You can hear that it holds a lot longer. And if I turn it back down, you know it gets shorter. And if I turn it way down, it gets so short that it starts to have that weird cutting out sound. So in the Fruity Limiter, the ahead knob essentially acts as a hold for that noise gate. And then the attack parameter is a little bit different. It's how quickly your sound is allowed to come through once it passes the threshold. So if I set this very high, so if I set it to a pretty high value, you can hear that it kind of it almost sounds like a snare brush. It doesn't even sound like a hit of the snare drum. It sounds like you're brushing that snare. And that's because when the snare passes the threshold, it's not allowed to play uh, straight away at the full level. It has to kind of fade in based on this attack time. And if I set it back to a very short amount of time, you can hear that it has that punch. And when I put it back high, it sounds more like a brush. So the attack can also help you in achieving a nice smooth noise gate sound. Uh, it, it just depends on what you're trying to use the noise gate for. And so speaking about what you're trying to use a noise gate for, uh, what would you want to use a noise gate for while you're producing a track? And 
like I've showed you with this snare drum, uh, they can be great for kind of cleaning up your drum sounds. You know, if you want kind of like expansion, but even, you know, a little bit more, if you want to clean it up a little bit more, clean up those tails. You know, it can really help you kind of avoid too much ringing in your drums or in any kind of sound that has a nice long tail and just kind of tighten things up similar to an expander but a little bit more. So they are fairly commonly used on drum sounds um, because you can imagine that if you wanted this kind of a snare sound Without that long ring, you know, if you wanted a nice tight snare sound, this would be a great effect to use. Uh, it, it all depends on what kind of sound you want, but it's great for tightening up drum sounds, uh, preventing those unnecessarily long ringing tails if you don't want them. And it's great to be used on reverb as well. You know, whether it's a gated reverb for effect, like I showed you in the reverb section, or if it's just kind of to clean up certain reverbs on certain sounds, it can be great for that as well. And also in removing background noise. So if I play this uh, audio clip, this is a section from a tutorial I recorded previously for this tutorial series. Out the DC offset. If you listen closely, you can hear some noise in this section. And that's just you know, background noise from um, traffic outside or you know, any, any number of things. So I process my uh, vocals for these tutorials and I compress them so that things are a little bit more uniform in terms of how loudly I'm speaking but I also use a noise gate. And you can see on the limiter, I'm gonna kind of increase the level of it a bit so you can see and hear it a little bit better. Uh, you know, if I set the noise gate to be above that noise and then take the gain all the way down, Now you won't be able to hear that noise. But if I turn it uh, back off, so it you know, it just helps clean up the the vocal files for these tutorials. So you can do this on vocal recordings of your own if you record your voice for a track or someone else's voices for a track. Uh, same thing goes for other recorded instruments. Yeah, you know, it's um, a nice, quick and simple way to remove background noise. There are other kind of more powerful ways of removing background noise, but uh, if you want something quick and easy, uh, you can use a noise gate. So those are just a few of the different ways you can use a noise gate. Um, there are definitely plenty more. And, you know, that's something that you can look up if you want to, or you'll probably figure out some unique uses on your own as you get a lot more mixes. Uh, under your belt, but essentially any time that you want to kind of cut the noise to silence or depending on the noise gate, uh, just reduce it by a set amount whenever it goes below a certain level uh, to clean up or do whatever, uh, that's when you would want to use a noise gate. So hopefully that video was helpful. Hopefully you will now know how to use a noise gate in your productions and whether or not you use it and how you use it will be completely up to you.